let's talk about biomechanics. We're going to be talking about agonists, antagonists, and major clinical scenarios. Here we go. This video draws upon our knowledge of anatomy, both the origin and insertion of various muscles of the foot and ankle. Make sure you check out my video on biomechanics and the gait cycle. We're going to be talking about four major muscles of the foot and ankle during the gait cycle that drive the foot during gait. Make sure that you know the origin and insertion of each of these muscles. The first muscle is the tibialis anterior. Its main function is dorsiflexion and inversion, and it inserts on the navicular and the medial cuneiform. In just a second, we're gonna be talking about the peroneus longus, which is the antagonist of the tibialis anterior. Notice how on this chart, it does the exact opposite motion at the foot and ankle joint. When thinking of different clinical scenarios of the foot and ankle, it's important to think if one major muscle is severed or lost, which muscle will overpower the other muscle? This is the idea of agonist and antagonist. If the tibialis anterior were to be severed or lost, we would get overpowering of the peroneus longus. The next muscle is the tibialis posterior, which supports the arch of the foot. We know that the tibialis posterior inserts onto the medial column of the foot. Its main action is plantar flexion and inversion, and its main agonist is the peroneus brevis. Next is peroneus longus, and its insertion is on the first metatarsal base and medial cuneiform, and its major function is plantar flexion and eversion. Note that the antagonist is the tibialis anterior, as we talked about. The next major muscle of the foot is the peroneus brevis, and its insertion is on the fifth metatarsal base. Its major function is for eversion, and its antagonist is the tibialis posterior. We know there are many muscles of the foot and ankle and many antagonists, but when it comes to the major driving forces of the foot and ankle during the gait cycle, these are the most important to know. Clinically, we can see a question like this. A rupture of the tibialis anterior tendon will result in overpowering of which muscle? When the tibialis anterior tendon is ruptured, the major functions of dorsiflexion and inversion are lost. When we think of those functions, we know the opposites, plantar flexion and eversion will be gained and the muscle that does most of that work is the peroneus longus. Think about its insertion on the first metatarsal base and the medial cuneiform and how it adds to the plantar flexion and eversion in the gait cycle. Which two muscles are antagonists in the gait cycle? This question really tests your knowledge of anatomy and knowing the origin and insertion and action of each of these muscles. We know that the answer is A, the peroneus brevis and the tibialis posterior are both antagonists in the gait cycle. Thank you so much. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments.